let's continue our theme about the Jan retraction based on the ideal helical model. Uh, we spoke about the starting position of fiber bundle, parallel fiber bundle, and the twisted yarn. Uh, in idea of Brushler, we assume that total fiber volume in yarn and fiber cross-sectional area, means fiber diameter, don't change due to twist. Maybe that on the yarn periphery a uh, fiber uh, is a little longer uh, than the volume of such fiber is a little maybe smaller, maybe. In the center is the, a little pressed, so it, it, it can be opposite. But these differences are so small that uh, Brashler mentioned that uh, this assumption is possible to use. Okay, when we use this, we can write V0 is equal V, so that it's a constant, yeah? And also a fiber cross section S is a constant, now changed through the process of twisting. Uh, fiber volume in non twisted V0 is n times, because in bundle is n fibers, n times S fiber cross-section, yeah, times lens. Lens is zeta zero, fiber cross-section is S, S times zeta zero is volume per one fiber times number of fibers. Uh, in twisted form, the volume of uh, fibers, all fibers, fibrous material in this, this portion is S times zeta. S is uh, uh, the, the substance cross-section of our yarn times final zeta. Because V equal, V0 equal, V using this, uh, this uh, formulas, we obtain this here. Then we obtain zeta by zeta zero, which is S by, uh, S by N and capital S by N, substance cross-section by N. It's in the mean area, sectional area per one fiber, S star bar. And it was definition of Kn. It was Kn. So that zeta by zeta zero is equal to Kn. How it is now in uh, ideal helical model with yarn retraction. Yarn retraction delta, delta is 1 minus zeta by zeta 0. It was in starting slide to retraction problem. But this is Kn. This is Kn. So that it's 1 minus Kn. And we know Kn from an earlier analysis of ideal helical model. Number of fibers in cross-sectional yarn corresponding to ideal helical model, isn't it? So we can use our equation derived on the place of Kn, and we obtain that delta is this here. All other is only rearranging. Let's rearrange this equation using this way to this equation. Rearranging only common denominator and so on and so on. Yeah. Well. Uh, I think you you can uh, make it home self. No special no special uh, routine is here. Well, uh, so uh, on the end we obtain delta is square root from one plus pi d z square minus one by one plus pi d z square plus one, or because pi d z is tangent beta. D, we can write it also in that form. Second, uh, second uh, uh, expression for Kn, second version of rearranging of Kn for helical model was this here. Kn as a function of angle. That's this here. So that after rearranging we can write the same delta also in such form. 
The third is a rearranging according Brushler. When delta is this here, we derived it here. Then after rearranging, we obtain delta is equal tangent square beta d by 2. I think it's this, this is the easiest, formally easiest. All is identical, all is the same. It is all only different uh, shapes uh, of uh, interpretation of this. Yeah? Well, and now we want to uh, we want also to know this delta yarn detraction as a function of twist coefficient alpha. Uh, we know that uh, intensity of twist intensity is tangent beta d is pi d z, and uh, it was derived that it is also this here. Yeah, using this. We obtain for delta on the place of uh, uh, on the place of uh, tangents beta d here or pi d z here. We obtain uh, we obtain this equation um, so that of the small rearranging this this is maybe fourth or fifth identical <laughs> equation for for uh, yarn retraction. Uh, more interesting will be to uh, express a yarn retraction as a function of latent twist coefficient related to starting lengths where z, twist and the count are related to starting values. Let's remember it. Uh, we know that, or it was shown a lot pages back, it was shown that alpha is alpha 0 by 1 minus delta power to 3 by 2, 1.5. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. I was to here. So we use this, we use this equation on the place of alpha here. Yeah? We obtain this equation. The same is here, this equation. The problem is that now we have delta on left hand side as earlier, but also here and here. Yeah, so we must rearrange. It's only mathematical operation. We must rearrange this equation because to obtain the delta explicitly, it means in the form delta, delta is equal some function and on right hand, right hand side mustn't be delta. It's possible. The way is shown here. Uh, what is, uh, you can, uh, quietly home, step by step, to see it. Uh, it's good uh, in first step, for first step, call this ratio as A, then delta is this here, rearranging, then I make a square of left hand side as well as right hand side, some rearranging here, yes, this, 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 and here I give back to the helping quantity A, uh, this this ratio here, and after rearranging, we obtain such resulting equation. It's permanently same delta, but now the delta is function is explained as a as a function of uh, latent twist coefficient alpha zero. See it. From point of view, from one point of view, it's it's interesting. Why under square root mustn't be negative value, isn't it? So that 
this value must be higher equal zero. Yo? Okay. Uh, yo. So that this value must be higher equal zero. Because under square root, it's not possible to have negative. We, are, we speak about the real, real values, no, no complex values. Well, it must be uh, uh, this here, so that this here, so that this here. It's very important. It's very important because it say uh, mu is some quantity from 0 to 1. Something it is. Rho, specific uh, mass uh, density of fibers, it's some value, some constant. And uh, it's shown here that this value, uh, that the alpha zero by this constant, the square root, must be smaller than some parameter one by square root of four pi. So that alpha zero must be have some border, must be smaller than some border value, isn't it? It is not possible to give. Uh, number of coils to length unit per starting structure, uh, starting parallel fiber bundle, how you want. It exists a moment in which it is not possible more to give the coil inside. When you prove it, then you obtain something other. I will show you it later. Well, do you understand what represents this equation here? Yeah? Let's uh, calculate the parameters by maximum possible twist of the arm. The maximum twist is if this equivalency here is valid. Yeah? So that it's valid alpha zero by square root of mu. Rho is equal one by square root four times pi. By the way, it's 0 0.28 and something. Using this to the equation for uh, retraction, yarn retraction, on this place we obtain zero. We obtain del delta is one half, 50 percentage of this a theoretical maximum retraction of the yarn. Since delta equal tangent beta squared by two, hence one half is tangent beta, and so on, trivial the peripheral angle in this point of maximum twist, beta d is 70 degree. Now, uh, using equations derived, we obtain also tangents beta d, which is uh, 2 times square root of 2, roughly 2.8. Well, so are the, so are the, the equations or results, the border results for maximum twist. Uh, as a uh, roots from a quadratic equation, which was here, we obtain plus minus. The question is what, I, what is real? Mathematically we have two roots. Physically, only one is real, one is not, uh, one, the second is not possible uh, in reality to obtain. It is plus or minus, C. Huh? Plus? plus? Somebody said plus? Plus, plus don't be possible. Yes, you are right, you are right, because let's imagine uh, the structure uh, without twist. Then alpha zero is equal to zero. Square root, this is zero. Uh, uh, square root from one is one, so that it's uh, one half plus minus one half. You can obtain or zero or one or one. And when you have parallel fiber bundle without twist, you cannot have uh, the the value of retraction one <laughs> to zero. <laughs> You must have uh, the value uh, to zero lens. I mean, yeah. you must be uh, this value. This retraction must be equal to zero. Therefore, it minus is a real, a real symbol here. Well, 
The third idea based uh, on axial forces is also no. Important for us, this version, according to Brushler, is enough good. Yes, and please, oh, any minutes for change, for change of Jan 2. Okay. Continuation, well. Let's continue our team about the Jan retraction. It's some uh, summary for all three ideas. We analyzed only the idea number two, according to Breschler, and we obtained this, this uh, expressions for uh, for Jan retraction. How it is graphically? Here is alpha zero, latent twist coefficient, by square root of mu rho, in relation to Jan retraction delta. Our, the, our curve is the curve number two, this here. What we obtained by first coils, no uh, significant change with lens, then the speed with increasing, uh, with shortening, increase and increase, and here is the maximum value, here is the maximum possible value, the border value, and no more is possible. Theoretically, when we use no minus than plus in our equation, you obtain the second, you obtain the second uh, thin curve. It is only for completeness. Real is the, uh, this thin line. Real is the thick line here. Yeah? Usually, we haven't the chance to go to this theoretically derived endpoint. And the uh, practical maximum twist is, uh, is coming a little uh, earlier, maybe in this moment. How is this graph, this part of our graph, is shown here? The second curve is the middle curve among these three. So you see uh, that uh, all the three hypotheses are very similar. Is it well? Is not well in, in relation to the reality? Because we apply uh, ideal helical model, evidently uh, to this model nearest structure is a structure of twisted uh, filament yarn. A lot of years ago we measured together with my older colleague, uh, Professor Marco, uh, we measured a lot of uh, filament yarns uh, on a special instrument which we created and uh, we measured the yarn retraction. You can see that uh, all, all different counts, all different twists together are lying on one, only one uh, curve and using packing density 0.75 uh, in our equation, this uh, continual line show the curve in our, according to our theoretical model. The comparison is excellent. It's the best in my life, the comparison between uh, experimental results and the theoretical curve. So perfect it is. But around 0.25, around this point, stopped the possibility in praxis, in laboratory, stopped the possibility to uh, twist filament yarn. Wasn't more possible. In relation to the theoretical model, it is, it is uh, roughly here in this moment, now here. Yeah? From point of view of 
uh, yeah, retraction, the difference is high. But from, from point of view of alpha zero, the difference is not too high. And the question is why coming this uh, border situation earlier? It's evident because now our expressions are uh, related to the very complicated structure of real yarn. Real yarn is not axially perfectly symmetric. Therefore, an, an a bending mechanism also is coming when the peripheral fibers press the central and so on. And because the yarn is not absolutely, absolutely perfect in symmetry, axial symmetry, therefore this critical moment is coming a little earlier than our result from theory. But it's coming. It's coming. Yes, and what is, uh, what is doing with twisted filament yarn when we, yeah, uh, when we give more coils inside? This one. The maximum of possible twist we call as a saturated twist, terminology, saturated twist. And then it's not possible more give the twist to our filament yarn. I started first and then more and more uh, helicals of a twist of second order. It's important be under this border in the technology of uh, technology of uh, texturizing, because when you uh, have in when in machine you use too high twist, then such moments like this or this can break your yarn and destroy this, and the, the, the process is not continual. Continual. Okay. Uh, more difficult. For a filament yarn, this model, based on ideal helical model, can be applied without problem. Nevertheless, for a staple yarn, it bring complicated. It's more complicated. Why? Staple yarns are from staple fibers, so that the ends, fiber ends, and something so, can slip especially on the periphery of the yarn, by twisting, isn't it? Therefore, no so high force for retraction as by filament yarn. Therefore, the, the yarn retraction in a staple yarn is usually smaller, not too much, but a little smaller than the retraction by filament yarn. It's difficult to measure it, very difficult. Retraction by staple yarn. Nevertheless, some experimental results exist and therefore I can recommend you, when you have not something better, uh, then I can recommend you use, to use our equation for uh, uh, the shape of our equation for uh, yarn retraction, but on the place of a real yarn diameter d, give some modified diameter d delta. Yeah? Some smaller, a little smaller value than a real yarn diameter d. And uh, this d delta is related to d uh, using this pure empirical form, it's pure empiric expression, yeah, based on some set of experimental results. So that d yarn diameter, staple yarn diameter, times this expression where mu is packing density and s is, is a substantial cross-section of, of the yarn. It's better than nothing, it's better than nothing but no too, too good but it is difficult to say what's good and what's bad because it's very, very difficult to measure yarn retraction by yarn experimentally. Well, when we are speaking about the different applications of, 
of helical model. Let's mention also Jan stress strain relation modeled according a generalized theory of Gegov and Adas. By the way, Gegov was one of first end of end of 19th century, second half of 19th century. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, on the picture, we have two fiber elements. One, uh, two red fiber elements. One red fiber element is lying on the green surface of, of some cylinder, and elemental part of this cylinder surface is shown. This height is d zeta, okay? It's d zeta. Uh, this lens must be, this is radius r. So this lens is r times d zeta. Well, uh, the angle, the elemental angle is d phi. Uh, such element this green element with red fiber is he also here. So this lens is R d phi, this is d zeta. And this angle, this angle is angle beta, our known angle beta. Well, now let's take the yarn and load this yarn in some, on some breaking machine or something. So then, you, uh, you obtain a new position and new geometry of our, of our uh, element, fiber element. By the way, uh, do you know the, how is it in the English? Chayogumi, kaogumi, nyam, 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 nyam. Chayogumi. You know it. Did you use as a small, uh, small children? Yes. And when you use it, make also. <laughs> yeah? Yes. What uh, did you saw? That the thickness of this gummy is decreasing. Some contraction, isn't it? The same effect is in the yarn by its uh, loading. So that our, uh, our element, which started, on the radius r, is change his position to another smaller radius r dash. Yeah, of course, because we elongate the yarn, the lens d zeta, starting lens d zeta, is also elongate to a new lens d zeta dash. Sorry, it's my mistake here. This uh, arrow shall be here. Here is well. It's my mistake in this, uh, in this picture, sorry. Nobody is perfect. <laughs> well, uh, to new lens D dash, yeah? Uh, so uh, the lens of the fiber DL is now longer, longer, uh, have the lens DL dash, and the angle beta is changed, B may be smaller, new angle is B dash, isn't it? Well. Uh, let's now define some relative quantities. Epsilon L, epsilon in axial direction, epsilon therefore A. It is d zeta dash minus d zeta by d zeta, evidently, each, uh, each strain, axial strain. So that it is this one, or a d zeta dash is 1 plus epsilon a times d zeta. Well, it's a repetition from uh, last uh, picture. A radial strain, a radial strain, a radial strain is final radius minus starting radius by starting radius. So it is this one, so it is this here. Let's I think that uh, epsilon r must be negative value because r 
dash is smaller than starting R. The chief gummy effect. <laughs> contraction, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, contraction uh, ratio, you know, it may be under the term Poisson's uh, contraction ratio, is defined as a minus epsilon r by epsilon a. So it's positive value, isn't it? Be because minus epsilon r is positive value. Well, and fiber strain epsilon l, it's dl dash minus dl by dl. Evidently. So it is this one. DL dash by DL is 1 plus epsilon L. Now, based on Pythagorean theorem, we can write D square L dash, this is DL dash, so square of this is equal D zeta dash square, D square theta dash, this length square plus this length square. It is this here, yeah? Nevertheless, according to the relative quantities which we derive, we can write on the place of this here, such, such expression, and here this expression. And after rearranging, using also the quantity contraction ratio, we obtain uh, d square L dash in such form. Rearranging, trivial rearranging. Yeah, note, uh, all geometrical quantities are um, changed by yarn elongation. But the angle d phi must stay the same. Why? We have not only one element, but a lot of elements around, and the sum of all d phi around our yarn, this cross section, give 2 pi, 360 degree, before as well as after elongation. If d phi, for example, will be uh, smaller, then by elongation on the yarn, there will be some, some holes, some <laughs> something so. Yeah? It, uh, therefore, d phi mustn't be changed. Well, and uh, now your d, d square, it is here. Uh, from this triangle, the Pythagorean theorem is easier. It's uh, d square L is d square zeta plus r d, d phi square from this triangle. So it's d square L and d square L dash. Uh, the ratio d square L dash by d square L is equal to 1 plus epsilon L, we said. We use what we derive, this and this. We arrange this. We know what the, that, for example, R d phi by d zeta is tangent beta and so on and so on. And after rearranging, we obtain this ratio where, uh, where the green members have linear epsilon a, the black, the black, this and this, have epsilon r square, and the uh, uh, violet are without epsilon a. And some of these two violet are same than the denominator here, so that we can write our, our expression which start 1 plus epsilon L square is equal to, uh, to such, such form. <laughs> and because 1 plus tangent beta square is 1 b, uh, by cosinus square is here too, so we obtain this expression. In our lectures, we usually solve the easiest cases. So uh, let's imagine, because it would be easier, and sometimes it is real. In a uh, lot, in lot of cases, it's possible to uh, imagine that the deformation, the elongation of the yarn is small. Yeah? If it is small, then 
epsilon L square is very very small and epsilon A sorry and epsilon A square is also very very small it limited to zero so that 1 plus 2 times epsilon L plus epsilon L square we can write roughly as uh, this is roughly zero on the place of uh, we have la, one plus two times epsilon l for epsilon r we used what we derived and then after rearranging for small deformations only we obtain epsilon l is epsilon a times cosinus square beta minus eta times sinus square beta uh, eta is a contraction ratio Poisson's contraction ratio. Something between 0 and 0 0.5 may be. Uh, without this member, without the influence of contraction, this equation was derived by Gegoff in 1907. You are right. Yeah, so uh, you see that I don't present you some quite new theoretical model. <laughs> it is 100 year old model. Well, how it is with forces? In a fiber, the axial force, the axial force is called as F, F1 maybe, yes, F1. F1, because per one fiber, yeah. Uh, the fiber tensile stress strain relation, let's imagine, I said, easiest case, that it's linear. Then the uh, stress sigma, uh, then the stress sigma is proportional to epsilon l. If Hooke's law, then E is uh, is a young modulus, but it it's some constant. Okay, in our case, uh, yeah, axial force F1 is per, uh, to the area perpendicular to fiber axis, of course is sigma times s, so a epsilon l times s. The uh, vertical component fa is f1 times cosinus beta, so that it is this here. The fiber sectional area, this red, is a star which is s by cosinus beta. In today we, we set it. Normal stress on this area, on this, this red area, is sigma A, which is normal function FA, normal force FA by area S star. It is this here. Then uh, epsilon L, for epsilon L, we use the expression for small deformations, of course, and we obtain sigma A is E times epsilon A times this expression for small deformations I said yes and now back to our scheme when we used uh, which we used for number of fibers in yarn cross section we know that it elemental in elemental annulus in elemental annulus the area of fibers is ds yeah it was derived and uh, now the, uh, the uh, stress, the stress sigma A is given by, by this equation so that we can integrate. We can say what is the total axial force as a sum from all areas of fiber sections. It is shown here. All other is substitution, only one substitution, rearranging. Then it's a way. Uh, we assume, yes, in one moment uh, we assume that eta, contraction ratio, is constant, is same in, we, in each point in the arm. Yeah. And we integrate and integrate and integrate nothing more. Traditional integration which you must absolve in your first semesters by, by mathematics, isn't it? 
Well, then uh, you uh, then uh, on the final form we obtain this equation. Nothing more than integration of this one. Logically, it's clear. I can. We obtain this equation for force p. Force p is given by this uh, pi times mu packing density times uh, modul, maybe Young modulus, times epsilon a axial strain of our yarn, one half of uh, yarn diameter square. And here is angle beta d, peripheral angle or, uh, of fiber in yarn on the yarn surface, and and the and eta and eta. Okay, it's nice, but more interesting can be the tensile force utilization coefficient. We can. Uh, it was one side. We know we know the force which we need for elongation of the yarn using uh, strain epsilon a axial strain. Uh, in other case, let's imagine another yarn without twist, parallel fiber bundle or something so. Uh, and uh, uh, let's ask uh, how we must, uh, how, is the, how is the force for the same strain in such parallel fiber bundle, yeah? Same count. Well, uh, sigma a was e times epsilon a. Now, is now because the fibers are perpendicular to cross section parallel fiber bundle. Yeah? So, uh, and uh, it is equal, and the s is equal to pd square by 4 times mu, isn't it? Using this, we obtain such expression for fair force p star for force in the same yarn but without twist. And then the effect of twist to mechanical properties we can to, to tensile force we can uh, we can uh, express as a as a ratio axial force in twisted yarn by Axial force in non-twisted in non-twisted yarn. Using our equations, we obtain, obtain this here. You can see that this expression is same than this, which is before brackets. Therefore, it is this here. Well, how it is theoretically, and how is the comparison with some experiments? This is the uh, utilization coefficient uh, phi. It's called phi here. This utilization coefficient. And it based on angle beta d, peripheral angle. Yeah? Um, and also the, inf the, the role is playing eta contraction, uh, contraction ratio. This is angle beta d. This is, this is our utilization coefficient. And there are functions for different values of eta. If eta is equal to zero, so that the, the traditional Gagov's idea, we obtain such function. Yeah, higher is uh, eta, then the function is smaller. If smaller and smaller values of phi, but the trend is same. The theoretical curves are here based on our equation, which is this here. How it is practically? John Hill, a very known professor from UMIST, from Manchester. Now he is old man, but he was really the top person in my young years. Together with his uh, PhD students studied the strength of different types of filament yarns. And they obtained such, uh, such points for these yarns. It is uh, from the book of Hirel and co-workers, known book, Structural Mechanics. Well, this is the axis of our phi, this is our beta d. 
and using eta equal uh, 0 0.5 we obtain this function. So you see then that only here is not it is a little other curve but from this moment it is it corresponds to our result. Yeah? It corresponds to our result. So that we can say that this, uh, from filament yarn this result can be roughly used for used for for uh, estimation of text of uh, strength. Yeah. Uh, having higher twist, this quantity phi is decreasing. It means when I want elongate, I don't know, 5 percentage, parallel fiber bundle and twisted yarn, same count, then the twist uh, or both uh, filament yarn, I mean, yeah. Then in uh, parallel fiber bundle, I need a higher force than by twisted yarn. Yeah? Uh, twisted yarn is not filament yarn, it's not so uh, intuitively say tough than, uh, than uh, parallel fiber. This is parallel fiber bundle. Yeah? Why? Because the forces. The, 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 because the forces, uh, it will be evident, I think, from, from equations which are here. A note to the strength of staple yarn. You know that uh, staple yarn, uh, among others, uh, uh, for a strength of staple yarn influence two important phenomenon. One is twist. Uh, and the uh, second is uh, or a friction among fibers and then the geometry, internal geometry of the yarn. The internal geometry uh, brings some decreasing, uh, decreasing curve, this green decreasing curve uh, for, for uh, yarn tenacity yeah? or uh, something so. Uh, in similar way, then our model, of course, our model is based on a lot of assumptions, but principally, this is the same effect. The second effect, but the second effect is the blue curve here, which show symbolically the effect of friction. When we have a very small twist or zero twist, then in uh, filament yarn, the, uh, uh, for elongation of filament yarn, we need uh, high gist force. Therefore, also easier to say the strength of uh, parallel fiber bundle is high gist. But we can not, we cannot to use it by staple yarn because friction among fibers was so small. <laughs> that it it will be as a dust in air. <laughs> well, so the friction effect is increasing principally according to this blue curve. And two such influences together with synergy give something like this a red curve. Therefore, this curve has some maximum, some. Uh, maximum point, uh, point of critical twist, point in which the strength of the yarn is maximum, isn't it? Yeah? Uh, the note to the, uh, to the uh, future of such modeling. I said that uh, this curve we principally are able to create. The easiest version of it I presented here now. From other side, uh, the blue curve is in whole world secret to these days. The problem with friction and uh, fibers. We only know that the traditional equations like Coulomb uh, equation and uh, Euler's equation and so on are not 
enough well for, um, for use in uh, modeling of the Jan internal structure. How it is? That is a question. I hope somebody of you in future will be successful and will solve this special laws which are valid for friction among fibers in yarn and other fibrous assemblies. Well, I think that's all for today. Mm -hmm.